In today's video, we'll review ODE45, one of MATLAB's built-in ODE solvers. ODE45 is a powerful MATLAB function which can solve an ODE. Instead of using analytical integration techniques, it uses a combination of numerical methods to produce the answer. ODE45 works for single differential equations as well as systems of ODEs, which we'll discuss soon. Every problem we give you in this class is solvable with ODE45, but I want to make you aware of some other built-in solvers. ODE45 is a fantastic solver and is widely used in academia and industry. However, because ODE45 is known as a general solver, you may stumble across some problems which ODE45 can't really solve. Fortunately, MATLAB has an incredibly extensive family of ODE solvers, which can collectively handle pretty much any ODE you throw at it. In my own research, I've had to use the ODE15S function because the particular ODE I was solving didn't really agree with ODE45. ODE45 takes three inputs and gives two outputs. The first input is func, which is the ODE or system of ODEs in anonymous function form. The next input is tspan, which specifies your start and end times of the ODE. Finally, why not contains your initial conditions. Why not will be a scalar if there's only one initial condition, but will be a vector if there are multiple initial conditions. The two outputs are t and y, which are pretty self-explanatory. t contains the time vector, and y contains the solution vector. If you have a system of ODEs, y will have as many columns as you have ODEs. t will only have one column, regardless of how many ODEs you have, since that time vector is shared between every ODE. Let's move to MATLAB for the demo. Okay, so in this example, we're going to solve the ODE dy dt equals negative 2y plus 6. Before we type anything into MATLAB, you should always draw the face portrait and anticipated solution. I won't show the sketching process here, but I went and did this beforehand and you should end up with this. This is critical because we now know the general shape of the anticipated solution, which we can use to check the answer MATLAB gives us. Okay, so let's start typing the inputs to ODE45. The first input is func, which is the ODE in anonymous function form. This is pretty straightforward with one critical change. We now include t as an independent variable in the anonymous function. Note that we have the t, y in parentheses after the at sign instead of just y. This is because we're integrating with respect to time, so we need to have time as an input even though we don't actually have a t term anywhere in the ODE. Next, we need our t-span. In this case, t-span will be a two-element vector containing the start and end times of our integration. Please don't hardcode numbers directly into t-span. It's good practice to create intermediate variables like t0 and t-end and use those in t-span instead. That way, you don't have to fiddle with directly adjusting t-span. You can modify either t0 or t-end if you need to play around with the time duration. It's a much safer approach. Finally, we need our initial condition. This is a first-order ODE, so we only have one initial condition. If we had a second order ODE, we would need two initial conditions. We said our initial condition is y0 equals 1. And we have everything we need, so let's go ahead and call ODE45. The code successfully ran, so hopefully everything works as expected. I'd like to quickly inspect t in the workspace. We see that t begins at t0, which is 0, and ends at t end, which is 4. 
all the numbers in between are pretty ugly. They aren't nice round numbers like we're used to seeing in our vectors. This is pretty standard of ODE 45, so don't be alarmed if you see weird numbers in your code. If you want the T vector to contain nice round numbers, you can write T span in vector format, so it would be something like And if you move that into your script and run it, it'll force ODE45 to format the T vector accordingly. Now let's plot the ODE45 outputs, so uncomment the plot commands and run the code. If you take a look at the code, you'll see that I included the fixed point. You should verify this yourself. We can see that ODE45 agrees with our face portrait pretty closely. I'd like to point out a few things about the plot. First, we see that at t equals 0, y equals 1. This should make perfect sense because we said our initial condition is y equals 1. If you ever see that your initial condition in the plot doesn't match the initial condition we gave you, you messed up somewhere and you need to check your code again. Finally, we can see that as t approaches infinity, y approaches 3. This should also make sense if you recall the phase portrait sketching process. However, if we inspect y, we see that y never actually hits 3. We can confirm this with a quick check in the command window. Remember, the fixed point is an asymptote, so y will never hit or cross it. These are some pretty helpful tips I use all the time. I highly recommend using a similar strategy in all of your ME2004 problems. And that's it for this video. See you soon.